Hello and welcome. Welcome to the inside of a 4032, otherwise known as Fat 40. Yep, here it is. So if I'm going to try and find something to point with, oh, look, here's a pencil. Okay. So, oh, I got it. This, this is the connector that goes to the monitor. This is the power supply. Connector here is a ROM that's an EEPROM. And over here is another ROM that's an EEPROM. And this is the keyboard connector. This is the big capacitor that sits here and smooths things out. And then we have the other ROM chips and the other important chips. And I think it's just 6510. I haven't really looked. The one thing about the pet, it's nice to have this thing where you can flip it out. But it's sometimes it's hard to get in there to actually do things and check things and stuff. I wish more stuff was socketed, but it isn't. And here, I believe if this was an 8032, these empty things would be full. I believe they would, or at least some of them might be. And if you did want to switch this as being a universal board, there are some of these wires here, jumpers, that would need to be cut to turn it into an 8032. It would be, now, let's see, let's see, we can zoom in a little bit to get a better look. All right, so there. There's the ROM chips and this and this. These two sockets, worry not. They were used for um, other things that you put in. Uh, oftentimes, they were basically copy protection things. For example, batteries included had a chip if you had Word. Oh, uh, no. Paper clip. Word Pro had a chip if you had Word Pro. Um, and I'm not sure that these chips actually did anything except to say that, yeah, the chip's here. I don't know what was in them. And as you can see, again, that's an EEPROM. And that was, um, well, as I heard, this, this machine may have been connected to a batteries-included arbiter system, which was a thing that was used in classrooms so that uh, many, 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 many students could use a disk drive. Because disk drives were expensive. Computers were expensive. but there was no way they were going to have like 24 computers, 24 disk drives in a classroom. So a lot of companies, including batteries included, came up with a system to let them be shared and not conflict with each other. Let's move over here just a little wee bit. And up more. And we can see, indeed, the keyboard connector. Chips, chips, that's, I think, the 6502. Two other ones for input-output things. All very important. And, of course, there's lots of lots of little chips around here. There are little support chips, RAM chips. Let's see if we can slowly go on a little tour here. Oh, okay. So there is a better look at the power connector. And this other EEPROM. And the connector that goes to the monitor. There is actually, in the back, towards the back, there are two brown wires that come off the transformer that go up and give power to the monitor. They do. If you ever have seen the video I have of the monitor, like, smoking, that's because the two brown wires somehow got shorted out against each other. And that is not a good thing. Not good. All right, let's see if we can roll up here a bit. Have a look at the transformer. Okay, that's a capacitor. The transformer in the back, that's where all the power comes from, and it's not really very glamorous. It is very heavy, but it doesn't need to be glamorous. It needs to work, and, you know, they can put a cover over it and make sure it overheats and do all kinds of stuff. But there it is. It has a number of places power comes off. 
and that's what the computer needs. That is what the computer needs. And then, if we go up a little more, I'll try to do this well, we can see the bottom of the circuit board for the monitor. And, oh, there's, where is it? Oh, there is a ground wire that seems to go up there. The, the multicolored wires you see are from the keyboard. And then, where are, there's, there's the two conjoined wires that go upstairs. Anyway, and that is the pet. There it is. Let's move over a little bit. Oh, there's the keyboard wires. If we move up some more, we can see where the keyboard wires attach. And it's funny how they did adapt things over the years. For example, early machines, the keyboard wires were directly attached to the keyboard. Later, they ended up putting like an edge connector here. And this wire had a plug, so it was a much easier fix if something went wrong with the wire. You could just plug another one on. Much faster. I had a little keyboard from a chiclet pet that it had wire troubles. So it would have wires. I thought there was one, and then the more I worked on it, the more wires just kept on popping off. So I pretty much had to replace every single wire. These things happen, but on old machines like this, you know, don't be surprised. So that's the tour inside. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do next with this. And the answer is at this moment, I don't know. I just don't know. Let's see if I can move back up. Is that it? Okay. And we can move back down to the circuit board. There it is. The inside of a Commodore 4032, otherwise known as a FAP 40. This one is not appearing to be working, but I do believe the fuse is good. So, that's it. Oh, there's one other thing over here I should show you. Let me see if I can get here and show you that. One thing that helps you know that your pet is working it makes that little chirpy noise when you turn it on. And it, the, the small screen can, pets don't have this, but the universe has this thing here. It's a little wee tweaky speaker. Not high definition anything, not really, you know, wondrous. There it is. So when you hear the chirp when you turn it on, or when you hear the chirp when you're typing across and it reaches kind of the the time to warn you, that's what makes the noise. It does. As I look inside, also, um, I see that the edge connectors are pretty dirty. And a good way to clean them is, of course, a pencil eraser. Now, this one is not a good candidate for that because it's worn down. But when I go to like secondhand stores, I often look for bags of pencils all together that have erasers so I can do things with them. Anyway, I will try and figure out what it is that I might next do with this. I shall. I shall indeed. And what does that mean? I don't even know at this second. Because I am in the midst of cleaning up, but I also have to get things out of the car. And this is in the car. That, I think, is enough for now. So thanks for coming. Have a lovely, lovely day. David Bradley in the TV room. Signing off for now. For now. Until we meet again. Later.